Good afternoon and welcome to News R. I am Doreen Barry. Coming up in this edition of News R, President Anas Barikoma meet with the International Observer Team and ahead of the runoff on March 31st. I caught lift interim injunction is granted on Saturday. Nigeria supports the National Electoral Commission with vehicles, a boat and motorcycles. And the National Grand Coalition raises concern over an interim injunction that has been lifted by the High Court. All these stories and more are lined up in this edition of News R. The International Observer Team, comprising of Professor Amos Sawyer, Head of ECOWAS Mission, Mudlanti Galema, Head of African Union Mission, John Mahama Bramani for the Commonwealth and former Nigerian President, Goodluck Jonathan for the Electoral Institute for Sustainable Democracy in Africa, have called on President Adesbaye Kuma at State House. The team held discussions with the President after they have met with the key stakeholders, including the senior staff of the National Electoral Commission, ahead of the runoff on March 31st. We we'll bring you highlights. Thank you very much. Uh, again, you are always so available, mm. and uh, we, we're gratified that you always find time to see us. Uh, we actually. Uh, came to say thank you for the suggestions in the brainstorming that we had the other day. Mm -hmm. um, things uh, have been working out. Yes, we have met with uh, the chairman and the members of, of NEC, mm -hmm. with the uh, flag bearer of the uh, EPC and of the SLPP. I uh, had some really uh, productive discussions with, with them separately and then together and uh, we seem to have worked out some arrangements yeah. Yeah, such that uh, barring any unforeseen development mm -hmm. and we pray God <laughs> that there will not be, yeah. there will not be anything, uh, we seem to be on track for what, the elections on the 31st. Mm -hmm. Um, in the fulfillment of the court ruling, so there's nothing uh, that was arranged that <coughs> everything is compatible with the court ruling. The two sides are, uh, <coughs> are mm -hmm. and I think uh, we are mm. we are on our way. Uh, as yesterday, we met with the two parties and neck. Uh, of course, it was a long discussion, and the mm -hmm. main contending thing was the issue of. Uh, Talim Resource mm -hmm. and District mm -hmm. Office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the NEC explains the cost implications and that even the previous elections, that 2012 or so, mm -hmm. they, they, do, they did the same pattern and they are repeating exactly what they did 2012. And uh, after explaining, mm -hmm. we also <coughs> agreed that the issue of District <coughs> Office should, we should not look at it from the geographical perspective, mm -hmm. that must be a particular. Uh, GPS, there must be a GPS position to say it must be here, but uh, let the man, the district officer can perform that responsibility anywhere. And uh, if NEC say that that's what they've done before, and because of the cost implication, they will do the same thing. Let us look, is there anything that could create issues of uh, credibility to the process, mm. then let us discuss those issues. Yeah. But if it is the issue of the geographical location, mm -hmm. then at least I think uh, we should move forward somewhere along the line now. We did not really conclude properly, but all the parties agreed mm -hmm. on the uh, uh, runoff election to come up on the 31st. 
and that the two teams, uh, parties and NEC will agree to fine tune those technical details. But from the body language, we believe that they mm -hmm. are going to see uh, uh, agree with the NEC in a way. There was a legal disagreement between the Electoral Commission and the, and the petitioner. That was on the basis of the fact that the Electoral Commission's position still remains that the Supreme Court is the only court that has jurisdiction over mm. any election petition. And so regarding presidential, uh, regarding mm. presidential mm. election, parliamentary is the High Court, so presidential mm. is the Supreme Court. <coughs> So they still believe that that judgment of the High Court, you know, was not in order. That's why they appealed to the Supreme Court. Okay. And my understanding is that the Supreme Court is, list, is going to hear the neck. But whatever decision the Supreme Court makes, and the point I made yesterday was that the ruling the High Court uh, gave, I mean, it's, um, it's something that we all want to do already, yeah, exactly. <laughs> is to enhance the integrity of the poll. Mm -hmm. And so, even though you might not agree that they have jurisdiction, what they said does not uh, uh, defeat the, the purpose yeah. of what we want to do with the elections, you know. But I think in the African spirit, mm -hmm. it is uh, very appropriate, and I think that is what we should do uh, to address our problems in, at the level of the EU, at the level of ECOWAS, and uh, at a bilateral level, I think. It's very much in place, and I want to commend you for the great efforts that you have put in place, the time, the extra time you have put in, the long hours that you have spent, the sleepless nights that you have spent, all in uh, the uh, effort to ensure that we have uh, a free, fair, and uh, democratic elections in the country, and a, uh, a smooth transition. Uh, because uh, this is a critical moment for us. And um, uh, the party has reported to me, and I've heard again from the media about uh, the, the outcome of the meeting, and uh, generally I think uh, both parties and NEC uh, were quite happy with the discussions and uh, the outcome. And I believe that uh, it has really cooled down the hot uh, political barometer that was uh, moving right up in the country. I think yesterday was quite a significant day. The courts have taken decisions for the uh, High Court and uh, the Supreme Court. So we are now geared towards uh, elections on the 31st. That was an highlight of President Anis Bayakuma meeting with International Observer ahead of the presidential runoff. The High Court has lifted the interim injunction which granted last Saturday. The matter was taken to court by one Suri Ibrahim Kuma who asked the court to grant an injunction on the National Electoral Commission to restrain it from going ahead with the election on the 27th of March. The case generated so much public interest. Our reporter Princess Gibson was out there and she now reports. It was an overcrowded court with members of the public, largely from the civil society, including the bar that was filled with lawyers. The interim injunction was lifted with specific orders by Justice Abraman Mansaye. The orders include the use of tampered evidence envelopes, party agents to monitor the transfer of materials, with sealed ballot boxes accompanied by security personnel manual counting and tallying of votes, and strict compliance of Section 94C of the Public Elections Act of 2012. Section 94C states that upon receipt of the statement of results of pooling from all the pooling stations located in the district, the district's regional officer NEC shall compile his summary of the statements from the pooling stations with certified copies to the regional returning officer showing the number of votes cast in each constituency. Earlier, Justice Abraman Mansaye established that the High Court has jurisdiction to sit on such matters. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court will sit on Wednesday, 28 March, on a judicial review on the jurisdiction of the High Court to sit on the injunction matter. The conduct of the presidential runoff election on the 31st of March is also granted by the Supreme Court. Princess Gibson, SLBC News.
The National Grand Coalition has raised concern over an interim injunction that has been lifted by the High Court. The injunction is to the National Electoral Commission NEC from continuing preparations for old and the presidential runoff election between the Second People's Party, SRPP, and the All Congress Party, APC. They made their position at a conference held at the party headquarters at Wilkinson Road, Freetown. Aruna Patrick Kamara was there and he sent us to support. According to the leader and chairman of the National Grand Coalition, Dr. Dennis Bryce, it is significant to note that the majority of political parties, including the two political parties involved in the runoff, have reported gross irregularities and malpractices in the conduct of the March 7 election. He said it was on account of these irregularities that a member of the All People's Congress, acting in his individual capacity, sought an injunction to enable, among other things, a forensic audit of the entire process. As a party, the National Grand Coalition has also released a series of statements on the conduct of the elections. On the 9th of March, following the release of just 25% of the results cast, the NGC released a press statement reporting a series of irregularities identified in the voting process that would re require a recount across the country. The party wasted no time in informing the National Electoral Commission NEC through the office of the Chief Electoral Commissioner, Stroke National Returning Officer, its observations, concerns and objections. The presidential candidate of the National Grand Coalition, Halaji Dr. Kande Yumkela, said at a recent press conference the party exposed cases of irregularities and confirmed that after further investigations, the said irregularities were not only systematic but widespread. He said the party requested specifically for a recounting bull. Kailaun, Kenema, Bombali, Tonkolili, Putloko districts, and in the western area, but their request was not given due consideration for a reason best known to the commission. In addition, I know all the other parties have done the same. I mean, they've been having long sessions with SLPP and APC as well, and C4C. I hope they realize the responsibility they carry. I hope they realize how flawed the system was under their leadership and under their eyes. Um, and that some of their people who have been arrested, I hope they go to court. If you read the, the acts about public about elections in the country, they even specify the sentences you, gi you give to people who falsify information, who intimidate. It's a long list. Huh? Yesterday I spent quite a bit of time with the lawyers. I hope NEC pays attention to that. And I hope the courts the courts will hold those responsible for this rigging and set an example that this kind of crime is even worse than stealing money from, from, from some of these institutions. Because this one, this one, you're taking the will of the people and the constitutional rights of the people from them. So I hope they've paid attention and they'll do this, but you bet, we'll check again if they have. Dr. Yomkela said the NGC stands out as the biggest victim of the irregularities and malpractices that have married the elections in all the regions. He said they are still consistent with their internal processes and their fundamental principles of putting the country first. A large Dr. Kande Yomkela said they are still maintaining their position to stay neutral on the runoff and encourage their supporters and members to put Sigel on first and make their own individual choices as to whom to vote. We recorded them about what happened in specific locations. Uh, there are some areas where we have concrete evidence, where we score 105, they write 5 instead of 100. So you bet. And those who corrupted the system, uh, we've seen in the negotiations now, those who have been chasing us, they tell us, Say the reason we make the top so now no see una number go. So if una side anywhere, if una side will go win. I mean it is fact, yeah. And we've learned now from what what was done. But it could not have been done. 
without the complicity of men. You're asking us whether we entered this just with clean hands and we left it. Let me put it this way. The scale is just mind-boggling. Yeah? We know there are malpractices. I mean, yeah, as you know, we're all Sierra Unions here. What we saw now, systematic, massive, as we've seen, and as the two, Alassane and Hussain, have been showing us evidence from each person's uh, 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 opponent's uh, stronghold, you begin to realize how well this was done. Um, so again, as I said to the international, uh, for the international community as well, if they should learn anything from Sierra Leone, is to take their own time also to study. Kenya taught them one lesson. Sierra Leone should teach them another one. Give yourself time, study carefully how, how uh, uh, data is transferred from the remote polling station on the RRF, whether in fact there are duplicates RRS, and what was actually transferred to the polling centers. What happened with those numbers, yeah? He said they still provide adequate representation for sale unions in parliament and serve as a strong opposition for the next government. The National Electoral Commission has said in a press release that due to logistical delays resulting from the injunction, polling cannot be conducted on the 27th of March as originally planned. According to the National Electoral Commission, the runoff presidential election will now be conducted on Saturday, the 31st of March 2018. Next, every exercise will include election of Member of Parliament in constituency 1 to 3 in the Western Area Urban District, Mayor of Bond Municipality, and Councillors in Ward 5 in Kenema District, 278 in Bo District, and 353 in Pujong District. Neck in the press release assured civil unions and partners that it is committed to conducting credible elections. The people of Matoy in the Tonkolid district have commenced the construction work of the first ever multi-purpose complex, the 350 million lent project implemented by the Matoy Descendant Union with support from the Minister of Political and Public Affairs Nanet Thomas. The Mathoi community offered one acre of land free of cost towards the projects. <laughs> Community development is key aspects but mostly ignored or totally forgotten either for lack of funds or because nobody in some of these deprived communities show no interest in undertaking basic projects. Some communities in Ceylon have laid bare of decades without having been considered for national development. The Mazoi Development Union in the diaspora has taken the lead in implementing these as their first project, a multi-purpose complex in the community. Project coordinator San Francisco thanks the Mathoi community stakeholders for offering an acre of land free of charge for the implementation of the project. Mr. Zizé did not stop at nothing to extend an olive branch to offer Scalonians in the diaspora to look back home and to identify ways by which they could be back to their various communities. The Minister of Labor and Social Security, Matthew Timbo, a descendant of Tonkolili, applauded the initiative of the Mathoi Descendant Union for the implementation of the projects in the community. He also lauded the frantic effort by the Minister of Political and Public Affairs for ensuring the start of the project. Mr. Timbo urged the community to embrace development and to remain united to attain high dividends from the projects. The Minister of Political and Public Affairs, Nane Thomas, said she was delighted to have been part of a community she adopted in development. She noted that she was enthused by the warm reception accorded her by the people of Mathoi. Come, Kole, we can start the foundation of this project. <coughs> I want beg them you smart then. So we'll not be able for pay you now. Because some far there, and the one they were born there, they know you didn't get the money. I tried and they tried. That's make I decide to say I go help them. 
I adopt the village. So at least with this your small contact to I get, I go beg people them. We go help we. But now we go for finish the community center. And now that we don't get in a young picking Dr. Timbo, when I'm a colleague, I'm a colleague cabinet minister, we go hang it together. But now we see the All we go target. We go able for help we. For now, we'll finish this project because me not believe for say for start project we not done them. Not for start and I the thing, for finish them. And I the pray say next year by this time we will come back for say we can open. This is This is a brother I saw in a picking to get a good heart. And anything we can want for do, we put the ask for do them. And they do them well. So me want for beg you now, you now support this project. After this book, who talk talk about the pan, but they can begin for put the, the mortar for start the foundation. May God bless you all. She employed the full cooperation of the community, people to harness the fullest benefits of the complex. Fire has burnt down the offices of the National Commission for Persons with Disability at Gilwila and Brookfields. Many offices' properties have been destroyed, leaving the Commission with a very serious challenge. Joseph Ture files in his report, read in our studios by Marma Suma. This is the aftermath of the fire that occurred on Sunday between the early hours of 5 a.m. Chairman of the National Commission for Persons with Disability, Frederick Kamara, explained their ordeal. I was supposed to go to uh, Cambia yesterday, and then early in the morning, about 5.30, I got a phone call from my wife that um, the office was on fire. The place was, as you can see, burnt down. Well, um, as soon as I came, uh, when I came here and I got some... Uh, information from the security guys who were there over, who were here overnight I went straight to Adelaide Street police station to make a report and uh, uh, they advised the uh, that the security guys who were here should go and uh, make a statement on the issue and um, so in the meantime we have tried to notify various authorities and of course the property owner i have not been able to reach her directly but the executive secretary has tried to contact her lawyer uh, mr uh, tola thompson uh, jr and um, already I have prepared to send letters to His Excellency the President and other authorities to notify them of this disaster. Well, um, my own office luckily was not burnt because by the time the fire got there, uh, the uh, fire force was already here and they helped to uh, um, save it from being burnt down because uh, they were just in time to uh, get to to um, put out the fire it was already beginning to enter that area and that's the only part of the building that survived and luckily for me I had some very important documents in there that uh, were not uh, burnt down so I was lucky in that sense that uh, my own particular office uh, was saved from being burnt down. Oh, this is a very, very devastating blow, a very serious setback to the uh, uh, commission. 
The Executive Secretary, Salamin Kotekui, spoke passionately their worries about the present situation and even the alleged intrusion of tapes on the set day where they observed that the roof was removed from one part of the building that was not affected very seriously and stole some computers, money and other office equipment. We don't really have a place to stay. We don't have an office and all over the years, all the hard work we put together in order to give um, uh, the profile of, uh, raise the profile of the commission, all have been burnt down. It's like we are starting all over again. <laughs> <laughs> the roof and the getting, because the, all the buildings were locked, they couldn't get access to any of the doors. So they removed the, the with the pretense of coming to kind of uh, help with the rescue. But uh, what they did was to vandalize the office took away the, the remaining computers in the chairman's office and then some monies were locked up in the lockers, all of them we are taken away. I think it's a necessary thing now is to come to our head because then we have a lot of um, um, activities lined up. We also visited the chief fire officer of the National Fire Force, Chief Commander Bongi, who gave an insight of what might have caused the fire accident. That particular fire precisely um, around um, 5 30 in the morning and um, or 5 08 in the morning and then we responded immediately um, i will not say exactly when the fire started okay. but um, we received the call i mean a, a, a fire call was made by one mr abdul okay. um, using telephone number 088 278 and he called us exactly at uh, um, eight minutes past five in the morning mm -hmm. and considering a no traffic situation as of that time mm -hmm. we were able to respond swiftly in fact um, it's when we when we reached there we met the fire well alight mm -hmm. i mean the entire building was engulfed in fire and um, but then the building is not that much big so i mean it was a situation where we were able to i mean put the fire off with one fire engine I mean, it was not that much of um, a complex operation where you need to bring multiple engines. We, we are able to cut that off with, I mean, just a fire engine. And, mm -hmm. um, and that operation was a swift operation. Immediately we received the information, we left. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, but I will not say exactly um, when the fire started. Okay. I mean, there will be no way how the fire service can cross-check that. We can only rely from the first call. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, my men have been on the ground. I mean, since that time, um, our initial um, 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 our initial information coming up is that um, that fire um, was caused as a result of um, electric. I mean, I mean, we are now now in the investigation to look at um, what type of electric. I mean, but um, we are suspecting a generator, uh, not not a generator, an air condition, um, which was left unattended. And that could have created that problem. I mean, there are, there, are, there are two or three, I mean, advice I would throw on that. I mean, um, for people who are building, who, who, who are upgrading their building, I mean, what I mean, your building has been there for some time and mm -hmm. now you want to put in AC, you want to put in electric heaters and all of that, you must make sure you contact, I mean, appropriate electricity people, contact the NP mm -hmm. or EXA, I mean, Let's proper somebody go and check it. Or you can contact the fire service who will send in experts to make sure we, I mean, advise you on your fire prevention nature. Because what normally many people, I mean, fail to realize is that the cable you use to draw um, um, current for um, an AC, an air condition, is definitely different from that you will use for your normal domestics. So if you have had a building um, that have been electrified for some time before you want to introduce an AC, you must make sure that you search for the competent authority to come and draw the AC line from the mains. As the country braces up for the March 31st presidential runoff, business people countrywide are complaining of slow businesses as most goods coming into the country have not been imported. As a result, the limited goods prices keep increasing, 
causing undue suffering on ordinary citizens. The Sierra Leone Importers Association and the business community have expressed concern over this latest trend and called for a peaceful runoff elections so that business will resume soonest. At his office at Warden Street, the president of the Sierra Leone Importers Union, Tanu Jalo, spoke about their concern to Sheila Refo. Well, later I'll bring you more on that particular story. We'll continue with the news. The news are live on the Salem Broadcasting Corporation. More stories to come. Save the Children International Sierra Leone has rehabilitated primary schools and constructed retaining walls in the western urban, which were affected by the flooding last year, August. The symbolic handing over took place at the Baptist Primary School at Rosac. Awamose has more. So, on behalf of Save the Children, as part of our support, this is it. All the handing over ceremony of the Heathside Baptist Primary School also coincided with the provision of various wash items, including assorted learning materials for pupils. According to the Western Area Manager of Save the Children International Sierra Leone, Peter Bailey, the retaining wall and the rehabilitation of the school was done for the safety of the pupils and is part of the support package to victims of the August 14 disaster. The Western Area Manager said, they have been working on education, health, and child protection, adding that the funding for the project is over 400 million euros. August 14, nobody anticipated that the uh, city children will be here because Wazak is not part of the communities that we used to support in our development. And in our development projects, we focus on three, three main areas, health, education, and child protection. And in these three areas, we ensure that uh, every child is not killed by a disease that is preventable. So that is what we do in the area of health. And we also ensure that um, every child achieves basic education, that is the care. That is what we do in the area of education. In the area of child protection, we ensure that violence against any child is not tolerated. So that is what we do as a children. But we think the flood that we had affected some other communities let's open a rapid assessment so we went out of matome we came to this community and many other communities and we realized that uh, some of the schools the roofs were blown off um, teaching and learning materials were washed away so many damage occurred affecting the enabled environment for children to learn the headmistress of the hillside baptist primary school maria mabul thanked save the children international civilian for their intervention the rehabilitation of the school and the construction of the retaining wall will provide conducive environments for the pupils. She commended Save the Children and other organizations that have been supporting the school. Deputy Director of Education, Western Auburn, Nana Bokari, thanks Save the Children for the tremendous support to the different schools in the Western area. Mrs. Bokari appealed to the school to take care of the structure and the items. All the teachers and stakeholders from all the schools commended Save the Children International Sierra Leone for the great support towards the various schools in the Western Auburn. SABC TV News I in Freetown, how I must be reporting. We're going for a short break. After the break, we'll bring you business updates.
Well, in today's business updates, pound sterling buys at 10,000, 241 leons, and sells at 10,458 leons. US dollars buys at 7,450 leons and sells at 7,793 leons. Euro buys at 9,103 leons and sells at 9,284 leons. That's the end of the foreign exchange rate will now come to stories. Orange Sierra Leone has reduced its subscriber model SIM card from 1,000 leons to 500 leons. The company has also increased megabytes on its data and decreased cost by 40% of its charges per bundle. Aruna Patrick Kamara filed in this report. At the official launch of the new plan, the managing director of Orange Sega Leon, Sheku Drame, said that the price for Orange SIM card is now 500 Leon nationwide. Mr. Drame called on their subscribers to report to the company if retailer is selling the SIM card other than the stipulated official price. He urged subscribers to register their new SIM card to ensure that they benefit from the Orange offers. We have announced our investment plan. And you have uh, with us, we went during last year, the end of last year and the beginning of this year, all around the country to for the launching of all the new sites that we have built. We have built last year 45 new sites to expand the coverage of our network. But the most important part, because this was also something that we were giving to all the customers, including the existing one, existing one was about renewing our services. During last year, I can tell that we have revamped all our network, starting by the equipment that are not visible by you, uh, our customer, which are sitting in our data center. And this data center was put into operation and now is fully operational, handling all the traffic and the services that we are providing. And we have also, this was the part that was more visible, change all the equipment that we have on our poles. This has been without some impact, so I would like to take the, this opportunity also to apologize on behalf of the glitches that we have during this operation. But today, everything is completed, and we are proud to tell that now we have a brand new network that allows us to deliver you the quality that we promise and the quality that Orange is delivering everywhere. The data and device manager, Orange Felix Macaulay, said that last year they slashed their data price by 58%, which was a novelty in Ceylon. He said Orange has reduced the price. He said Orange has reduced the price to 40% based on the demand of their customers. Mr. Macaulay explained that with the new data plan, Orange has reduced the price of all data bundles. 3 MB would only allow 5 MB. It don't become permanent, 5 MB. 10 MB for the same price. The price will not change the price, so will not change the price. What we do, we put a more volume and reduce the price. In other words, we reduce the price by 40%. We say 10 MB, now that's 16 MB, permanent. 50 MB, 65, and we don't go to 65 MB. For 150, for 150 MB, now we're 200 MB. All these are for the day. So if you go from 5 MB, 16, 16 MB, 65 MB, and 200 MB, just for the day, if you are looking for hours, for 24 hours, yeah? Now, for the weekly volumes, we get, we get 75 MB, now the 90 MB. He assured their subscribers that they are now completed their work on the installations of the network. They can now deliver quality network that they promised to their subscribers. The board of Stella Diamond, an Australian-based new field resource limited, which also operates in Ceylon, have reached an agreement for a re recommended all-share offer for $23.7 million. Lucian Ganda reports. The 
acquisition is expected to create one of the largest diamond mines in West Africa with an estimated resource of 4.5 million carats. Stella is being valued at 7.74 million pounds sterling, with Newfield offering its shares at 12.5 pence per Stella share. Newfield Resources will acquire the entire share capital of Stella, including the Tongo and Tonguma concessions in the east of Sierra Leone. Meanwhile, the mining agreement with Oxshire which was closed on the 28th of February this year, will enable them meet essential administrative expenses. The agreement with Oxshire will allow Stella to build a single mine for the simultaneous commercial production from the Tongo and Tonguma Kimbalites deposits in the east of the country. Business News, Lucian Ganda, Freetown. We visit for business updates live on the Salem Broadcasting Corporation. The Nigerian High Commissioner to Sierra Leone, Dr. Abes Ibrahim Ubada, has called on Salonians to be peaceful and calm ahead of the presidential runoff. He made the statement during the handing over of two pickup trucks, a boat, and five motorcycles at the Nigerian High Commission. Here's the reports. The gesture from the Federal Republic of Nigeria is show of solidarity towards the country's democratic process. Presenting the items, the Nigerian High Commissioner, Dr. Abis Ibrahim Ubada, said that the gesture to the National Electoral Commission is in continuation of his country's support in strengthening Sierra Leone's electioneering process. He spoke about the long-standing ties shared between Sierra Leone and Nigeria, ranging from culture, music, and history. He called on Sierra Leoneans to be peaceful when choosing their choice by avoiding violent activities. Receiving the items on behalf of the government of Sierra Leone, Chief Protocol Foreign Affairs, Tamba Juana, commended the Nigerian government for supporting the National Electoral Commission with vehicles to conduct the elections. He said that Nigerian Syrian have come a long way, citing the tremendous support they have rendered in different aspects. The chairman of the National Electoral Commission, Umfa Ali Conte, felt delighted to receive such gesture, especially when the commission is challenged vehicles. He recalled a similar gesture made by the Nigerian government in the 2012 elections. Up next, a sports update with Esther Murray Samoa. Sports update on News R. I am Esther Mai Samoa. In this edition, Upwards Basketball Club are back after registering their first victory against their opponents, Freetown Lakers, at the ongoing non violence basketball interclub competition at the basketball court in Freetown. 
The competition is organized by the executive of the Western Area Basketball Association. Here is the report of the match. Catch an encounter between Upwards and Freetown Lakers basketball clubs. It was a comeback for Upwards after losing all their first three matches. Saido Sisei is the coach of Upwards Basketball Club. It means a lot to me as a coach out of the mechanism don't put in place because of course that is any coach they expect. But you get your team for like you get victory and it means a lot to me and I'm happy about that. Well, really, we'll be get some technical problem then. Then, two, we'll not be get a center. Then, we we'll find out how they get the 24 club too much. But with that all, we go and work on that. All the half half side there will be for sale. The layups, the turnover them, we try to work on them. And indeed, after we don't do that, we say victory to the we don't have it. Freetown Lakers are yet to secure a single victory in all matches played. Patrick Sunfu, coach of the club, explained the reason. Um, the entire team is, 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 is split and play for three clubs. So we therefore use the Division 2 and register the under Division 1 categories. And so me, maybe don't left the game for five years, so I need to come back and strengthen the team. You see. But these guys are young guys, uh, high school players there. I believe saying that they first experienced this. So they get a lot for land. And I believe, say, as the league they go on, they'll do better. Well, the only thing no more way wants as young guys, when I don't force them, one, the game experience, how for win games, they get for land, how for win games, which they don't see all about all it takes because they don't play with all the big players. Them. I believe, say, when we go home, we get for work on with shooting, we get for work on with offense and with defense, and then we get for work on the free mind of taking shots and win games. The competition will continue this weekend with entertaining fixtures lining up. Esther Mai Samar, SLBC TV. Congratulations to Upward Basketball Club for winning their first match at the Unwin Basketball Competition. A friendly match between Sierra Leone and World Cup qualifiers, Ian, has mounted last month could be subject to a match fixing inquiry according to bbc sport iran who meet spain portugal and morocco in russia one four zero and tehran according to slfa boss aisha johansen says an under strength inside left free town without her consent she said the saloon line up on 17th march was far from representative of the full strength national side, largely composed of young stars with just a handful of overseas based players making the trip. A FIFA investigation unit is already set to look into the potential match fixing involving Sierra Leone. The inquiry includes a World Cup qualifier between Sierra Leone and South Africa in June 2008, which ended goalless. Johansson now wants the Iran game to be added to the matches being investigated by this match fixing inquiry committee. We will bring you a response from the representative of the agency that facilitated the trip, Benjamin Gordon, who has consented to be hosted in a subsequent program. That's the latest update in sports. I am Esther Mai Samra. Thanks for watching. Well, from sports, update to bring the news state close. The main point again. President Anisbaya Kumar has met with the International Observer team ahead of the runoff on March 31st. High Court has lifted interim injunction it granted on Saturday. Nigeria has supported a National Electoral Commission with vehicles, on boats, and motorcycles. A national gun coalition has raised concern over an interim injunction that has been lifted by the High Court. Well, that's all in this edition of News R. On behalf of my news editor, Ibrahim Ansari, I am doing very thanks for time. Do have a lovely day. God bless you.